For problem number four, um, our function is f of x equals 2x to the 5 thirds minus 5x to the 4 thirds. Now, with the last two problems that we did, um, we really got a ton of information from the original function and the stuff that we learned in the first and second derivative was just kind of bonus material. In this one, you're going to see that the first and second derivative give us really essential information. So we're going to start out uh, by finding the pieces that we started with before. We're going to find x-intercepts. Okay, We find x-intercepts by plugging in 0 for y. Um, and now to do this, I am going to factor out the lesser exponent, which is x to the 4 thirds. Um, so remember, that's like dividing these out. So you subtract the exponents. So that leaves us with 2x to the 1 third minus 5. And then when we set these both equal to 0, we get x equals 0, or 2x to the 1 third minus 5 equals 0. So we can add 5 and divide by 2. And then remember, x to the 1 third, that's the same thing as the cube root of x. So to solve this, we're going to cube both sides, and we get 125 over 8, which is like 15 point something, I believe. So our two x-intercepts are 0 and 125 over 8. So I'm going to graph these. Uh, I went by 3s. I really like counting by 3s. So there it is. So 15 point something. Those are x-intercepts. Now, to find y-intercepts, you're going to plug in 0 for x. And when you do that, you're just going to get 0. But we've already got that point listed. All right, our domain is all real numbers. We can plug in whatever we want there. Now, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. This is not a rational function where we have like a polynomial in the numerator and denominator. This is totally different. So we don't have any um, horizontal or vertical asymptotes in this one. Uh, symmetry. If you plug in negative x, This term, you're taking the cube root and then to the fifth power, so that's going to remain negative. This one, you're taking the cube root and then the fourth power, so that's going to cause it to become positive. So this becomes a positive, but then you still have the negative 5. So you can see this is not the same thing you started with, nor is it the exact opposite. So we don't have any symmetry on this. And lastly, we are going to limit, look at the limit as x approaches infinity of the function. If you plug in infinity here, you get um, infinity minus infinity. This infinity happens to be greater, so it's still infinity. And as it approaches negative infinity, this is going to be negative infinity. Remember, this is going to turn it into a positive, but then that negative is still there. So you have negative infinity and negative infinity, which is just more negative infinity. So that's all we know from the original function. We've got two points, and we know the end behavior. So this one really does count on uh, the first and second derivative to get more information about it. So let me just rewrite the function so that we have it. Okay, so the first derivative is going to be 10 thirds x to the 2 thirds minus 20 thirds x to the 1 third. Yeah, I think that looks good. Um, I am going to go ahead and factor some stuff out. I'm going to factor out the lesser exponent, which is x to the 1 third. I'm also going to factor out a 1 third while I'm at it. Just make things nicer. So uh, taking out the one third is going to leave me 10. And then remember, it's like dividing out the x to the one third. So you end up subtracting these exponents. And then over here, I take the one third out. So it's just 20. So to find my critical numbers, I'm going to set both of these equal to zero, both of those pieces. So either x equals zero, that comes from right here, or um, 10x to the 1 third minus 20 equals 0. So we add 20 and divide by 2. So that's the cube root of x equals 2. So x equals 8. So these are my two potential um, minimums and maximums.
So we'll put those on the number line and check in the derivative. Okay, remember we're going back up here. We're gonna plug in. So if we plug in like a negative one, um, we get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. If we plug in one, um, we get a positive here and a negative here. If we plug in something like nine, that's gonna be a positive and a positive. So we are increasing, decreasing, and increasing. So if we switch from increasing to decreasing, that means we have a relative max at zero, zero. Here, we're going from decreasing to increasing, so we have a relative minimum at eight. And to find the y-coordinate, you just need to plug back in. Um, I think negative 16. So plug back into the original. So we have a relative maximum at zero, zero, okay? So this is somehow coming up and back down there. And then at eight, negative 16, which is down here, we have a relative minimum. So decreasing and going back up, okay? Okay, so now we want to look at inflection points and concavity. So we're gonna go back to the First derivative, I'm going to take this version of it because that's easier to, to, to go on with. Um, I'm going to write it, rewrite it. Uh, I'll just do a smack in the middle here. So the first derivative was 10 thirds x to the 2 thirds minus 20 thirds x to the 1 third. So our second derivative is 20 ninths x to the negative 1 third. That's exciting minus 20 ninths x to the negative two-thirds. Okay, let's see. Um, we have to set this equal. Do you, do you want to fact, should we factor out a lesser exponent? I guess we could. Let's, uh, let's factor out 20 ninths x to the negative two-thirds. So remember, that's like dividing these out here. So we subtract those. So that's going to be x to the one third. Does that sound right? Yeah. Minus one. Okay. So, uh, so we have 20 ninths. This is going to go down to the bottom. This is on top. Okay. There's our second derivative. We set that equal to zero to see these potential inflection points. So clearly we have something that we need to check out at zero. That's going to be an issue. So we need to look into zero, and then we also need to look into when this is equal to zero, which is going to be at one. So the two points that we need to be concerned with are zero and one. So we're going to plug that into the second derivative, this thing right here. If I plug in a negative number, that's a negative on top. Uh, that squaring is going to cause this to be positive. So overall, that'll be a negative. If I plug in 1, uh, oh, I can't plug in that 1. That doesn't make any sense. If I plug in a half, um, that's going to give me a negative. And if I plug in something like 2, that'll give me a positive. So I am concave down until we get to 1, and then it's concave up. Um, so let's see. Uh, so the only inflection point is at one. At one what? I don't know. What do you get when you plug in one? Uh, negative three. Okay, so we have an inflection point at, where was that? One negative three. Here. So it is concave down everywhere before that. So concave down. And then it turns to concave up. And come back and hit that point. And this is what this looks like. It's not beautiful, but you get a great idea. Okay. So that is uh, the first part of curve sketching um, from my basement. Also, there have been superheroes here the whole time. There they are. Great job, everyone. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video from my basement and um, I'll see you tomorrow.